All right, it's uh, 536 now at KTSA. Trey Ware here, and you've been hearing that former San Antonio police officer, after shooting a 17-year-old by the name of Eric Cantu in the parking lot of a San Antonio McDonald's back on October 2nd, he was arrested last night, charged after turning himself in last night, according to the chief of police. And uh, if you're just now waking up, I gave my 30,000-foot view of this. Um, I won't rehash everything that I said, but basically I'm, I, I cannot justify this shooting. And I do not believe that a veteran police officer would have uh, done the done the same. This was a basically a rookie. He was a probationary officer. He's a very young man, and uh, yeah, it, obviously, just my view of this, looking at the video footage, uh, what happened was he was not a threat to the officer, and I think that either a threat to the officer or a threat to the public uh, deserves a, a shooting like that. And, and certainly, this I can't justify it. And particularly when you think about uh, the public who is around there and you think about a stray bullet, you think about what may have happened when somebody else in the parking lot of, say, the McDonald's or whatever might have ended up getting shot, an innocent bystander, you certainly, I can't find a way to justify this. And as you well know, I give deference and uh, the benefit of the doubt to, to Leo all the time, and I, I just can't at this point. But listen, I'm, I'm open to listening to you talk about it. And let me start with Nick at 210-599-5555. And Nick, you're on KTSA with Trey. Your thoughts? Yeah, Trey, good morning. Hey, um, you know, uh, being in the military, we learned this a lot of times that no amount of training that, that you do can get you ready for a real-world situation. I've seen guys that have trained for years and then get into it, and then that they, they don't know what to do at that moment. Yeah. Yeah, no, I I completely understand. I, I and I'm going to have some questions as to whether or not he should have been by himself on duty. If he was probationary, should he not had a more, um, you know, qualified or more uh, experienced officer with him at that time? I know he called for backup. Is is the report? Uh, so you know, I'm I'm not necessarily throwing down on him like he was a rogue officer and that he did something really horrible and he was out to get this. I, I, I'm not throwing down on him. What I'm saying is he made a horrible, horrible decision in that moment, and uh, I think it was the wrong decision. Right, that was my point. You know, he had he might have been he might have even graduated top of his class in the training situation. Yeah. But once you put the real world Boy. into it. Mm. You know, you get that sugar honey iced tea, Boy. you don't know how you're going to react. You're so you know right. You're so right, man. And that's why I'm not trying to throw down on him because I, I get that. I, I completely understand. It's not like he woke up that morning, I don't believe, and said, I'm going to put on this belt and go out there and shoot somebody. I, I don't think that happened at all. All right, Nick, thank you. Steve, you're on KTSA with Trey. Good morning, sir. Good morning, sir. You had a previous caller that pointed out that the standards are lowered. Also, the ranks are thinner. Also, both this officer and this kid were both educated in the Democrat-controlled government school systems. And if you want more of this, this and a lot of other things, you, there's always the question, why? How can people be so stupid? How can people, why, wh- who, are, who does it? They're educated in the Democrat-controlled government public school systems. But one thing that hasn't been uh, stated yet was the vehicle a stolen vehicle. I heard that that there was that it might have been a stolen vehicle. He thought it was a. Ever since then, crickets. Right. So I, I'd like to know if that vehicle was in fact stolen. Right. And again, if you want more of this, by all means, vote Democrat. You'll get a lot more of this. Steve, I couldn't agree with you more. As always, thank you very much. As far as the vehicle being stolen, I, to me, I I, I want to know that too. And I'm going to ask that question of SAPD. Was it in fact stolen? But that's kind of irrelevant at this point, right? Because even if it were stolen and he's escaping, he's going away from you. In other words, he's not a threat to you or the public. For a stolen vehicle like that, you just radio in. You say, hey, you know what? I think this is a stolen vehicle, and here's the license plate. Here's the color of it. Here's the make and model of it, and it's on this street headed that way. Any officer that encounters this vehicle, pull him over and stop him. I, I don't think, and again, you know, I'm not a police officer, and I've never been in that situation, thank God, you know, as a responsible gun owner. But I don't think you just start firing at a vehicle that's racing to get away from you. I, I don't think that's how you're trained, and I don't believe that's how you handle this. And obviously that's what the chief said, and obviously why the young uh, officer was fired, is that that's, that's what happened. And, uh, you know, the protocols certainly do not 
do not call for that unless he's like firing his gun out the window and he's going to hurt somebody or something like that, which we don't even know if he was armed. These are all questions that, that need to be answered, right? Was he armed? Uh, was the vehicle stolen and all that? But as far as the vehicle being stolen and, and maybe even him being armed, it's kind of irrelevant because it didn't appear to me, again, 30,000 feet, that he was a threat uh, to that officer or anybody else in the public. And if anybody was a threat, it was the officer by shooting like that when you could have had an innocent bystander walking across that parking lot with a bag full of fries and bang, took it in the head. And you always, it doesn't matter if you're an officer or somebody like myself who's a responsible gun owner, you always have your field of vision in front of you. You're always watching to see who's around before you act. And so, again, I'm not throwing down on this officer but what I'm saying is is that I think what's happened to him so far, as far as the firing and possibly even the, the charges, I'm not, I'm not real up to speed on all the law concerning all that. I think a lot of this is justified. Certainly the firing is, as far as, my, as, far as I'm concerned. Uh, Pete, go right ahead. You're on KTSA. Yes, sir. I'm a truck driver going to the valley from uh, Floresville. Mm-hmm. I'm putting on that, uh, that cop that got, uh, shot that uh, kid. Yeah. Uh, here, here again we go. If a cop tells you to stop, or get off the car, just do what the cop says, that if he does something wrong, if the cop is wrong, take it to court or report him. And that's all I got to say. I mean, just follow the law. I mean, just do what the cop says. Well, I yeah, that's all I'm 100%, saying. 100%, I mean, that's, Pete. Uh, the kid was wrong by not getting out of the car when a cop said, get out of the car. That's that's absolutely that's, right. That's, that's, that could have avoided everything. Yeah, no, I, I agree with that. Uh, but but two but two wrongs don't make a right, right? So the kid right. takes off and he's running from you. I, I can't exactly. say that I justify shooting at him, right, because he didn't I, get I out of the car. The I feel for the kid, yeah. but, I mean, that was a mistake, I guess, on both parties. That's but. right. That's right. That's right. That's right. Two wrongs don't make a right. The kid should have got out of the car. My dad always told me, Excuse the language, but, you know, this is the way he talked. Don't get in a pissing contest on the side of the highway with a cop. You're going to lose every time. Do what he said. Take it in front of the guy with a black dress on downtown, and you all will settle it there. That's what you do. And uh, my dad was right, as he was with almost everything else. But uh, that's just, you know, yeah, he, I, I can't justify shooting at him if he's trying to get away. You radio it in, and you say, here's the car. This is the direction it's going. Somebody down the road down there, Officer ABC, please stop him when he gets down there to you. I think that's the way you do it. Anyway, okay, uh, quick break. When we come back, I'm going to talk a little bit about what the FBI was doing with the Steele dossier, and they're using your money to try to get Trump out of office. If this does not prove to you once and for all how corrupt the upper echelon of the FBI was and probably is, then you're unconvincible. (laughs) It won't be anybody who's going to be able to convince you. Back in a minute, Trey Ware, KTSA.